I'm here in Cascales with Louis Falcao at the MUST conference. It's, well, it's a good name. It's a MUST conference in the yes. wine world. W what is the MUST conference? Well, MUST, actually the, the full name would be MUST Fermenting Ideas. And the Wine Summit. And it, it is a wine summit, but the real name is MUST Fermenting Ideas. Uh, MUST coming, of course, from, um, you must come, but also was a MUST that is fermenting. And that signature fermenting ideas is exactly what we want to do. So our aim is to instigate um, ideas so that people will discuss what the wine industry is facing, you know, all the challenges, what the trends are, what will change in the future. And of course, it's always difficult to predict the future. But the thing is, the world is changing. It, all, it was in the past, it will be in the future. That's a guarantee. Things change. Mm -hmm. So you do have to adapt. And the idea is to get the best speakers, the most renowned, the most influential people, the one who actually have a voice and have um, a meaning and have um, information to give and let them share with the attendees who wants to, wants to participate. But instead of just coming here and listening to someone else's perspective, what we want to do is instigate debate. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you want to discuss, if you want to ferment ideas, it's not just in one way communication, it has to be in both ways. Mm -hmm. So we give the opportunity that speakers will be challenged by the attendees with questions. So there's a minimum of 15 minutes of uh, Q&A. And the thing is, with those questions, they are so enlightening. Mm. Because you can actually either agree or disagree or ask for you know a slight explanation for whatever that person has just presented, and um, and that's the aim to discuss the midterm and the close term future. So um, and we're here at the, the almost the final stretch of the conference. Yes. Now we have an afternoon, uh, a little bit more than an afternoon left. And, uh, Actually, what you're saying, I would agree very much from that it's almost the most interesting piece, with it, which is in the Q&A, when you have people yes. from all, all sorts of backgrounds mm -hmm. um, who ask the question and you, you exchange ideas. Um, now, it's a really impressive lineup of speakers here. Mm -hmm. How have you managed to find all these people? How, what's the thinking behind the selection of them? Well, the idea, if you want to debate, you cannot just have a one-sided opinion. Not just within the conference with the Q&A, but also you have to have um, presenters, or speakers who have different backgrounds and would give you different ideas. And also, of course, we want to have engaging speakers. But we want to have speakers who have different lines of thought, you know, old school, new school. Um, even people who are not directly related to the wine industry, um, like um, Vivino and Wine Searches, also from the tech side, mm. but they are so important. So, what we want to do is actually try to touch what's going on, try to be a little bit provocative, not in the sense that we want to just provocate, you know, just out of nothing. But the idea is try to show what is challenging us, but with a witty perspective sometimes. Mm. Like, for example, you know, one of the things that we we need to debate is climate change, of course. Mm -hmm. but there's millions of discussions about climate change. Most of the times it comes with some stats that will show you that this region will be warmer, 2.3 degrees in the future, and on and on and on, which is important, of course, I'm not debating that. But, for example, last year we did add the discussion on climate change, but we gave a real example, because we tend to look at it on the negative side. The truth is that for some regions it's actually good, so we um, challenged um, an English speaker to come and talk about English blocking wines. Yeah. And, the, and of course, most of the naming tries to be a bit provocative again. Um, if nothing else, food for thought. Um, and the idea was, um, will English blocking wines will ever take over champagne? You know, we're talking roughly about the same soils. The climate in southern England now is more or less what Champagne was three years ago. So the thing is, for you know, for Belgium, for the Netherlands, for some countries in the world, actually it's something cool. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. We want to give different approaches and just 
two days before, um, right at the beginning, we had a presentation by Robert Joseph, which is, again, very provocative, you know, and it is really uh, an engaging speaker. And right afterwards, we had Michel Vetan, which has it's a wealth of information. It's like a walking encyclopedia. He knows a lot, but with a totally different approach, a very French approach, too. But, you know, that is just the beginning, just to show you that we can, we want to show the many sides that the wine industry has. And right after this talking that we have, we're having a presentation about wine tourism with a South African. Yes. And we want to show different sides, and it's not only the European side, but the worldwide side. Yes. That's and why we have speakers. speakers yes. This is a very international crowd. But then again, also looking at the people who are here, it's also, we're in Portugal, but yes. it is a quite international crowd of people who are here in the audience. So, thinking about the audience, who should come and listen to this? Who, are, who is the hmm. target audience? Um, I would say that every professional <laughs> would ought to be here, uh, if nothing else, because there is so much info going on. Um, I would say most of the thing will be deciders. People who take this in, I mean, besides press, of course, but definitely trade. I mean, yesterday we had a presentation by Deborah Mayberg about the Asian markets, focusing on special markets, but that was like a workshop on how to export to Asia. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, it also appeals to people, I'm sure, definitely in the press, that's for sure, it also appeals to winemakers. Yeah. Like Albert Contonini had just a wonderful presentation about how to go back to roots and understanding the physiology of the soil and how you can change and adapt different varieties. So the thing is, we try to be eclectic and not focus in one specific target of the wine industry. We try to give a general overview. I think the wine industry is too much divided and goes into different sectors that sometimes right. they don't talk to each other mm. and tends to create bubbles. Mm -hmm. And you stick within your own bubble and we want to have a global perspective. Mm -hmm. We want to integrate all of them because if you're planning, and that's the idea again, debating the future, if you're planning ahead, you need to have people from different sides of the mm -hmm. wine industry. Um, and we also need an international perspective, of course. And that's why we have speakers coming from the five continents. And you were saying international. International is the key word. That's why all presentations, for example, are in English. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are in Portugal, we are in Cascais. Um, lovely seaside resort, wonderful, um, venue. wonderful venue, but the fact is, this is in Portugal, but it's not a Portuguese event. Yeah. This is a wine event, um, and actually the attendees, more than half of them are you know, coming from any, many countries in the world. Um, we have people coming in from New Zealand, mm -hmm. um, which is the opposite side of Portugal in the world. Um, so talking about the future. Yes. Next edition of Must Fermenting Ideas? June 2019. 2019. Same location. Same, Same location, venue. date set? Um, we do. We don't want to communicate it yet, but yes, so, we do. But it's going to be June. It, it's almost the same days. June 2019. Yes, that's a Must guarantee. Must Fermenting Ideas. That's a guarantee. And, and we hope to see you here. Thank you. Really. You're welcome. <laughs>